Right now I'm at a rest area alongside Interstate 8, and at first glance this looks like any other random rest area. But this place has a secret. Compared to a lot of other freeways, Interstate 8 is fairly short, only extending 178 miles into Arizona. Most of the freeway travels through the Sonoran Desert, and it looks pretty empty and desolate at times, but there's a lot of history along this freeway, if you know where to look. In this video, we are going to take a look at the hidden history alongside Interstate 8 in Arizona. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures, this is Steve. So for our first stop on our journey looking for hidden history on Interstate 8 in Arizona, we are just east of Yuma, about 22 miles from the border of California, at this parking area. Now this rest area is pretty bare bones, there's not even a restroom here, but the reason we're here today is because of this right behind me. Interstate 8 travels from San Diego, California to the junction of Interstate 10, southeast of Casa Grande, Arizona. The 8 totals 350 miles in length, with it being almost evenly split between the two states. Today we're just going to be focusing on the section of Interstate located in Arizona. There are a lot of things to see and do in this part of Arizona, but I want to examine some of the hidden history on the side of the freeway. The desert holds a lot of secrets. But for the purposes of this video, we are going to include only things that are actually on or next to Interstate 8. With no signs or any indication it's here, in the desert behind this parking area, you could find this lonely monument to a World War II flying accident. On June 28, 1944, a B-17 Flying Fortress departed Yuma Army Airfield just after midnight for a training flight. At 1.42 a.m., 2nd Lieutenant William Richel radioed the tower at the airfield to request landing instructions. Ten minutes later, a few witnesses 20 miles east of Yuma saw a massive fireball as the bomber impacted the top of the Gila Mountains. All five servicemen aboard the plane lost their lives in the crash. Wreckage from the plane can still be found on the mountain today. This monument was placed here in 1990. Construction began on Interstate 8 in the 1960s, and the freeway was completed in 1978. When it was built, the interstate largely followed the same path as highways 80 and 84. Along the drive, you could find a number of motels dating back to the highway days, as well as a few stretches of the old road. For our next stop, we are right on the side of the freeway, and I mean literally right on the side of the freeway, at the Yuma and Maricopa County lines, right near where the Stanwix train station used to be. Now the Stanwix train station is long gone, but a little piece of railroad history remains. Stanwix Station was originally located north of here when it was part of the Southern Overland Stage Route. With the arrival of the railroad in the 1870s, everything shifted to take advantage of the increased travel through the area. Southern Pacific operated a train station near here, but it, like everything else in Stanwix, is long gone. Stanwick Station was also located right next to the border between Yuma and Maricopa counties. And to mark the county line so that it would be visible from the train, this small monument was placed here. You could see the green Maricopa County sign off in the distance, but the real boundary between the counties is right here where this metal beam is. Now we're in Maricopa County.
While nothing remains of the Stanwix train station at our last stop, just a few miles down the freeway, you can still find the Sentinel Depot, built in the 1800s. Built in the 1880s by the Southern Pacific Railroad, this was originally a two-room telegraph office. Then in 1895, it was moved and expanded into a passenger depot. The building was originally a few hundred feet south of here, but with the construction of the interstate, it was moved to this location about 1960. This building is the last surviving 1800s telegraph office built by the Southern Pacific Railroad and one of the oldest train depots in Arizona. Next to the train depot is this really cool old gas station that was built in 1926. It looks like it was a Texaco at one point. On the south side of the freeway, you can find a portion of the adobe walls of what was once a restaurant and hotel for the railroad. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot more information out there on this building, so I don't know much about it, but it is pretty cool to look at. Imagine how many trains have passed by this building in the last 130 years. We're at our next stop and the weather's taking a bit of a turn for the worse. Somehow we've managed to come out here on one of the rare rainy days out in the desert. But here we are at Bighorn Station, which was once the only stop in between Casa Grande and Gila Bend on Highway 84. And now it sits alone and abandoned on the side of Interstate 8. Established by the Bender family in the mid 1920s, Bighorn Station was the only place for travelers to stop between Casa Grande and Gila Bend on what was then Highway 84 until the early 1950s. The Bender family, originally from Oklahoma, were ranchers and there was a lot of land available here. So they settled in this part of Arizona right after World War I. They decided to diversify their business, so A.L. Bender, along with his wife Laura, opened the Bighorn Station and sold food, gas, and other items to locals and travelers alike but they never stopped being ranchers. In 1952, the family sold their operations here and moved to Prescott, Arizona. The property is currently run by the BLM as part of the Sonoran Desert National Monument, but like everything else in this video, there is no signage or anything at the site telling this place's history. We've made it to our last stop, and the thing we're about to take a look at, there's actually a number of these spread out through the Casa Grande area. A lot of people believe that the CIA put these here in order to calibrate their spy satellites. That's not really true, or at least that's what the CIA wants us to believe. All joking aside, these markers are part of a test range established in the mid 1960s to test the dynamic performance of aerial survey cameras. There were 272 concrete calibration markers embedded into the Earth's surface around Casa Grande that formed a 16 mile by 16 mile grid. The land for these targets was leased by the US Army Map Service and was used by the US Air Force for photogrammetric calculations for mapping camera calibration. People link these to the CIA's Corona spy satellite program, and they are even labeled as Corona satellite calibration targets on Google Maps, but they were never used for calibrating any satellites, only aircraft. These are probably best seen from the air, but they're still pretty interesting to stop and take a quick look at. Most of the 272 markers are gone, but quite a few still remain throughout the area. A number of them can be found right off the interstate. So 
So that's our look at some of the hidden history along Interstate 8 in Arizona. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.